I'm Dr. Ben Newman. I study coronaviruses for a living, and I'm going to try to answer your questions the uh, best I can. All right, next question is from Barb. Yeah, frequent caller. Hello, Barb. How you doing? Um, uh, hi, Dr. Ben. Here's a bunch of questions. It is a bunch of questions. <laughs> Now that we're several months into the pandemic, uh, do we know how it affects each age group and if there are leftover problems from getting COVID? Uh, it seems like some people are having longer and more severe problems after the initial infection than others. Yeah, that is uh, correct. Um, and then uh, it goes on, why do you think it's causing such a wide range of symptoms due to the what is basically the same virus? Uh, yeah. And the answer is that the disease is almost entirely, um, the damage is more host response than virus. So you do it to yourself, uh, in other words, um, not you know because you want to, but because it depends on which part of your immune system gets activated, when certain parts come on, where and how they track down the virus and uh, knock it out, and how certain cells malfunction during this. It's a lot of little tiny chance events, and uh, with that many chance events, yeah, it sort of spreads out into this cloud of different um, diseases, essentially. Yeah, which is probably more common than we think for a lot of diseases. Um, even in the ones where we think they are really consistent and you always get the same symptoms, there's probably more of a range that pe than people uh, realize, I would say. That's what recent studies with Ebola and with uh, SARS-CoV-2 are pointing toward, and I bet that's going to be true in other cases. But this is a good time to bring up um, a recent paper that we haven't talked about, uh, which is in the... Uh, Journal of the American Medical Association Cardiology, so JAMA Cardiology, and I've got the paper down here. Let me read the title in case you want to go find it. It is, here we go, Cardiovascular Magnetic Resonance Findings in Competitive Athletes Recovering from COVID-19 Infection. So they're doing uh, heart MRIs on um, uh, competitive athletes at Ohio State, um, if I'm understanding it correctly. Uh, it seems to have been performed there and got approval there. So I bet that's who it is. So you may actually know <laughs> some of these athletes. They're not identified uh, in the uh, paper because that would be totally unethical. But yeah, it may be somebody that you watch on TV even um, if you follow college uh, athletics at Ohio State. Okay, so what did they find? Well, they looked at, I think it was 26. Let's see. There we go. 26 competitive college athletes. So like proper... Uh, Division One college sports athletes. Um, uh, about half male, half female, and uh, average age was 19 and a half years. So, uh, yeah, on the young side, but very much college age. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right about where you would expect them to be. Okay, so of these... Um, only about half reported any symptoms at all. The other half were totally asymptomatic and were just picked up by uh, scanning and screening. And of the half that had symptoms, the symptoms were all mild. Nobody needed to go to the hospital. Nobody had even severe symptoms that they reported, self-reported. So these are just mild cases. They are not looking at severe cases uh, at all. Um, so what did they find? Wow, all right, yeah. There were uh, pretty serious problems in the hearts. And remember, they're only looking at hearts. But they found a couple of different markers showing heart muscle damage in uh, four of the athletes. Two of them had this thing called uh, um, pericardial perfusion. That's where you get basically fluid uh, building up between the heart muscle and the little sac that's around it. Um, and if there's too much fluid in there, this can make it harder for the heart to beat. So this is um, bad, but not uh, necessarily fatal unless it goes on for a while. It's just one of these things that kind of wear you down. Um, and uh, some of the people uh, with this heart damage were reporting shortness of breath, which would at least kind of match up with what they're seeing on the uh, magnetic resonance um, image. So. Uh, let's see, some of the other things they saw, so they had actual evidence of heart muscle damage in uh, four of those people. And then in 12 of those people, if I'm, oh yeah, and all four of those were male. So it's a small enough study that you can't be super sure, but uh, it was four male and zero female. And we already know that this virus does tend to hit males a little harder than females for reasons that still are not completely well understood. Um, 
there are explanations that would probably cover part of it, but not the whole thing yet, uh, definitely. Um, and so um, of those, there's another, I believe, 12 athletes. Let's see if we can find it. There we go, 12 athletes um, that are showing. Um, it's uh, LGE, so this is... Um, basically a, a, a thickening or brightening of the signal in part of the heart. Normally, this is a marker for scar tissue. So they're looking at a picture with an indirect method. You could actually open these poor kids up and, you know, poke around in their heart and confirm whether it's scar tissue. But that's super invasive and it's totally not worth... Yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> it would be just just to know yeah there would be no uh real clinical benefit that i can see and again definitely not a doctor here but uh, in doing that that just seems like a bad thing to do uh so uh, yeah probably half of these mostly asymptomatic people ended up with um some version of scar tissue in their hearts uh in four of them the scar tissue uh rather they showed signs of actual heart muscle damage so like you would get with a stroke for example and in two of them, they showed fluid on the heart. Uh, and this is out of 26. So 10% fluid on the heart, uh, roughly, uh, yeah, 15% uh, or 20% uh, um, heart damage, some version of strokes, and about half with um, scar tissue in there. Scar tissue sometimes takes a while uh, to go away. So this may be there for months to years. And some scar tissue never goes away. And so this is what we've been saying. And so this uh, paper came out on September 11th, yeah, of all days. And uh, yeah, it is not great news. So on the one hand, the athletes are not reporting being seriously ill. So it may be that if you are fit and healthy enough, you don't notice when this sort of damage is happening inside your heart, or that just nobody notices this level of damage and it just builds up and uh, eventually, yeah, it either gets you or it doesn't. Um, but that's not particularly comforting, I would say. And so these are kids that are, uh, yeah, I don't know. They're they're pursuing their dreams, I think, in most cases. In some cases, they're probably uh, doing this uh, because it's going to pay for their university. And university can be real expensive otherwise. So, yeah, <laughs> I totally get it. But at the same time, everybody else is kind of putting these kids in harm's way. Now, they're, they're willing to go themselves, but... Uh, there's a lot more people cheering in the stands usually than there are down on the football field, I would say. Yeah. So uh, there's a pretty strong social pressure behind this. And uh, yeah, if that social pressure wasn't there, I wonder how many of these people would be doing this. Probably some. Yeah, maybe all. Hard to tell. But uh, yeah, it's not a great situation anyway. And I think down the road we are going to see more problems. Uh, doing something which deliberately damages your heart to the point, doesn't not deliberately, but which, which has a 50-50 chance of damaging your heart to the point where you're gonna end up with scar tissue is not a good look. That seems very dangerous and that's not something we would ever do in any other part of our life. So I don't know why we think it's okay here. Yeah, but. Yeah, <laughs> that's another conversation for another day, I guess. Yeah, and uh, maybe you need a sports expert to talk about that one. Uh, I'm just a virus guy. That's all I know. Um, so thanks very much uh, for a good question. I hope I answered at least some parts of your question. If there's some part of your question I didn't answer, just stick it in again, and I'll uh, I'll address that one properly. Thanks very much. This has been Ask Dr. Ben.